Hello guys and welcome back to Lead Logics. This is the count number of nice subarrays problem from Lead Code and the number for this is 12848. So in the given problem we have an integer nums, array of integer nums and an integer k. Uh, we are given with the fact that a continuous subarray is called nice if there are k odd elements in it. So if a continuous subarray contains k odd elements, it is a nice sub, nice subarray. And we have to return the number of nice subarrays present in the array nums. So let's see what are nice subarrays through our example. So suppose we have example 1, nums equal to 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, and k equal to 3. So we have to take continuous subarrays with exactly 3 odd numbers here. So if you carefully see, you can find this subarray 1, 1, 2, 1 and another subarray 1, 2, 1, 1 which are continuous and also have only 3 odd elements. So both these uh, subarrays becomes nice and the output is finally 2. So for this the problem requires us to count the continuous subarrays with exactly k odd elements as we have seen from the problem statement as well. And to achieve this we can use a prefix sum approach. The key idea to use the prefix sum approach is to keep the count of odd numbers which are encountered so far while iterating through the array and uh, use this information to count the subarrays with the desired property efficiently. Suppose we have uh, we have a odd element uh, while iterating through the array we get the odd element and uh, our present count becomes for k equal to 3 our present count becomes 2. So we'll search in the prefix array how many subarrays are there with two a sub two with two subarrays with two elements in the subarrays. So we'll see we get a count from there and we'll add it and we can return the answer. Let me show you through an example that will be a better explanation to it. But before that, let's see the process. So first of all, we have to initialize some variables. We will initialize a count variable that will be an array to store the prefix sums and we'll set count of 0 to 1 because initially when we before starting the iteration there are no no odd elements in the array we assume there are no odd elements in the array so that's why count when there are no odd elements 0 odd elements is set to 1 and we have a variable answers to store the result and t to store the current number of odd numbers while iterating through the array then in the next step we have to iterate for in the each element of the nums update the count of t and for this we'll use a bitwise operation bitwise operation we'll do a and with one and we'll check if there exists a prefix sum t minus k and if there exists we'll add it to the count to the answer and update the count of the prefix sum t in the count and we are doing this because if we encounter a variable we can find the number of uh, remaining odd numbers that we require from t minus k and we'll get the answer so for this example nums equal to 1 1 2 1 1 and k equal to 3 we have a tabular or uh, visualization so when we are in at index 1 nums of i is 1 odd count is 1 because this is odd the count updated becomes 1 and 1 because 0 was already 1 before iteration and because due to this this also becomes 1 and when we do k minus t this part k minus t this gives negative because t currently is 1 and three, k is 3 so k minus t is minus 2 so we don't have to do any operation here we can skip to the next then the, when the index becomes 1 we see nums of i is 1 so the odd count becomes 2 and the count will be updated so the we are so the count of 2 becomes 1 and t minus k becomes here minus 1 because t here becomes 2 and k is still 3 so the still it is invalid we can return not return we can continue to the next iteration then the next index we have the element 2 now since 2 is not an odd number we will not increase the odd count and count will be updated to 2 in here in this case and t minus k is still minus 1 because 
the odd count is still 2 and we will still continue because this is still invalid less than 0 in the next step as soon as we encounter a 1 the odd count becomes 3 and the count will be updated to 1 so the count of 3 becomes 1 and t minus k here becomes 0 t minus k becomes 0 this is an important, important factor because we are going to add t minus k to count so now t minus k was what t minus k was 1 so we are going to add t minus k to count and then that will be added to the answer so that is added to the answer now in the next step we see the next element is 1 odd count becomes 4 and count of 4 also becomes 1 ok t minus k t is actually in this case 4 k is 3 t minus k becomes 1 count of t minus k in c and t 1 added so the answer becomes 2 so as you have seen this is the process how we are going to solve this and we finally reach the answer 2 now let's come to the coding section of this but before that do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel so the first step was to create the array count and for that we need length nums.length so count equal to new int this will be of the size let's say n plus 1 and we were setting count of 0 to 1 because the odd number before starting we have 0 odd numbers and we were having some more variables and answer equal to 0 and t to track the current number of odd, odd numbers then we have to iterate in the nums array and t plus v and 1 so this is a this is a trick used in bitwise operations whenever you do an on and operation with one so it tells you whether the number is odd or even if it is odd it will return one and if it is even it will return zero it is because in this operation the last bit the last bit of this value v will be checked with one that is and operation will be performed on the last bit of v and one so if the last bit of v is one so 1 and 1 will be 1 and if it is 0 it will give 0 because 0 and 1 is 0 and as you know that all the odd numbers have last bit set to 1 so we have used that factor to check if it is odd or even and if we in the next step we were checking if k minus t was greater than or equal to 0 that, is, that means it was not invalid then we were adding the count of k minus t to the answer so we will add the count of k minus t to the answer and in the next step we will do the count of t plus plus and return the answer so this was the this is a pretty small code but with the great logic Let's try to run it for the sample test cases. So it passes for the sample test cases. Let's run for the hidden test cases as well. I'm sorry, there are some network issues due to which it is taking time. So you can see it passes with a good time complexity and a good space complexity 
so let's talk about the time complexity and the space complexity as well so the time complexity for this solution will be o of n because we are iterating over the nums array once and the space complexity is also o of n because of we are using the count array you can also find the java c++ python and javascript solution by going to the solutions panel and here you can check this solution this one this is my solution here you can find the intuition approach complexity step by step explanation final answer the final answer is a part of of the step by step explanation and also find the java code c++ code python code javascript code and yes do remember to upload me so i hope you understood the logic and li do like the video share it with your friends subscribe to the channel thank you for watching the video have a nice day